hey hey my name is Polish Links and we are back home in Sakura Angels let's see how the night will go and how how the story develops and so on all right I closed the front door and collapsed against it with a drone outside and borrowed any borrowed strength I might have had up until this point draining from me completely What a day! I know, right? What a day! My head aches. My arms drop. My legs fell like they're about to give way. Give way? Uh, give away, right? Or more like a give up, but well, well, well never mind. I can't believe I'm even still standing after all that. The smell of food is heavy in the air. They are mine enough to make my mouth water. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right. I think I have forgotten to eat today. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Well, that's basically not really good. I should probably fix that, if I want any chance of surviving what tomorrow might bring me. Apparently I'm just in time, as the food is all set on the table, with my parents about to dig in. Okay, okay. This short window of time in the evening is really the only chance I ever get to see my parents outside of the holidays. So I usually cherish these dinners and try to engage with them as best as I can. Nice, nice. But today I can hardly even get a word out. I sort of just grunt in the direction before I collapse into the dining chair. Hmm. As the meal goes on, the usual questions come up between us, such as how our day was, uh, had went and if I had been up too much. Uh, okay. Huh. Despite looking up the leash other, I say it was just like any other day. I can start looks, but they don't have any reason to doubt me. Before long, dinner is finished. Yeah, and after several extra helpings, I can't think of anything better to do than to call it an early night. Huh? Early night, you say? Well, I wouldn't be able to fall asleep after that. I believe. I make myself excused and head for my room, my steps unsteady. I drop onto my bed, face first, the mattress giving out a groan. It can't be any later than 9pm, and already I want to sleep. Well, happens to me sometimes, especially when I return from war. Well, mostly when I return from war. Unfortunately. Is every day going to be like this from here on out? I hope not. While I could just as easily fall asleep in the current position I'm in, there's probably a good risk I might suffocate, so I guess I might as well do things the proper way. If I have to. Uh, I push up off of the bed and go too close to the curtains. Huh? Maybe I already fell asleep? As I went close to the curtains, my eyes are drawn to an amber glow down in my garden. A fire. A campfire, to be precise. I'll give you three guesses as to what that campfire, uh, as to who that campfire belongs to. Well, guess. You have, let's say, ten seconds. Right, ten seconds passed. Let's see. Yep, the two magical girls. Saka and Harry seem to have taken it upon themselves to set up a little base camp in my back garden, complete with a tent and fire. I guess when they said they'd be close by, they're really mad close by. I think they're trying to cook something going by the pan over the fire. And realize their lives were so rough, with how glamorous they generally look. Ah, they saw me. 
Saika gives an enthusiastic wave my way, taking her eyes off the pan. Yeah, okay, hi. I give a feeble wave back. I would honestly go to the kitchen, take the food that was left and go to them. And I think, isn't this the normal way to do? Somehow I get the feeling I should be worrying about this far more than I am. But whatever, this can wait until tomorrow. I draw the curtain shut, right, as whatever sack I was cooking in the pan ignites into a tremendous fire. I can just about hear Hikari's cry of terror through the window panes. Letting out that one final mighty yawn, I flop backwards onto my bed and it's not long before whatever semblance of cautiousness I might have that left drifts into the night. Weird guy. Streams of light filtering from the curtains, rousing me out of sleep that I wanted to last forever. Uh, I have half a mind to just turn over and wrap myself tighter in my blanket, but I guess I have enough to worry about right now without adding big late to school on top of everything else. Let's tackle the day, I guess. I rolled it out from the under the covers and crushed the floor with the grace of a slot. Ow. On top of everything else, still aging from yesterday, my head thumps once more, right on schedule. I really wish it would cut me a break. Just this one time. I think I've never fallen actually from the bed. At least I don't remember doing that. Starting from a crawl along the floor and gradually pulling myself up in the walk as I was evolving in real time, I tucked the curtains open. Huh? I look down the garden to find it completely empty. Not a trace of fire at the tent or the girls. Maybe I really was dreaming last night. I mean, they couldn't really be as stupid as to come in plain sight like that. Well, maybe they have some powers that allow them to hide from other people, so yeah. The fire now be enough for the police to be brought down. That's one less thing for me to stress about, at least. Thank God. Rhines. I better not waste any more time, or I'm going to miss my chance to have a proper breakfast like yesterday. A wink at the dance around my eyes, I start for the bathroom. A nice hot shower should do wonders. Huh. I have a weird prediction about this. Something might happen in a second. I pull open the door to the bathroom and... And happens what... Uh, yeah, what I expected. Uh, what? Mm. The bathroom is occupied. You? I don't want to close the door. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I slammed the door back shut, my heart an erratic mess. That was a close one. Wait a second. Something is in the adding up here. I swing open the door again, the sight taking away my breath once more, even though I already knew what to expect. <laughs> Thanks. I knew it. It is Hikari. And, uh. Let me ask, she's hot. Rather underdressed Hikari at that. She's caught like a deer frozen in her lights, her entire body dancing up in a near status pose. She's down to her rather extravagant underwear. Which is really nice if you don't count the socks she was in the process of taking off. Huh? They match and everything. With how she's bent forwards like this, my eyes can't help but gravitate to her rather ample. Kenta! Yes? Huh? I'm snapped out of whatever days I might have been in by her shrill tone. What? What was I doing again? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't I be asking you what you're doing in my house? I don't want to. Her face is beat red. She's practically trembling finger for still frozen in place. 
but how am I the one at fault here? Hey no, don't get mad at me. I don't remember ever giving you guys permission to free use my house. Especially in the shower. Okay. <laughs> Not until you... Okay. Okay, but can you just... Uh, her eyes gives off... Uh, give off a dangerous glow. The room roughly covers so slightly with a frightening power. I guess I this can wait until afterwards. If I want to keep my house intact, at least... Well, it's technically not really your house. I'm pretty sure you didn't pay for it. But your parents... Right? Okay, okay. My bad. Really. Flashing an apologetic smile and laughing nervously, I bring the door to close once more. As demonstrated last night, sometimes retreating is the best course of action. Well... After that little uh, situation, I found myself downstairs both the girls present. Sanka has the same cheerful green as ever. While Hikari looks like she wants to grab the nearest sharp object she can find and got me with it. Again, that wasn't my fault. How am I supposed to know? Was I supposed to know? So Do you guys want to explain yourselves? Huh? Nani? Oh, sorry. She tilts her head, giving me a confused look. Oh, come on. How can I be the only one to find something strange with this? Well, I mean... What are you guys doing in my house? Ah, uh, using my things even, and so on. So you pretty much just broke into my house. You can break into my house. Uh, I mean the two of them. Yeah. You did what? I quickly throw a glance about looking for any windows inside. No trace of a break in at least. Gee, what if I do? Throw a break through one? I thought people who knew magic would be more subtle. She tries her best to reassure me with her limitless optimism, but... Yeah, sorry. Her hands on her hips with a blinding smile. I can't say I mirror the enthusiasm to fall. I bring a palm to my forehead, a headache beginning to set in. And for once, I know the cause of this one. Is this really necessary? Can't you guys just like magic yourselves clean or whatever? I get cold stares from both of them. I said the wrong thing again, didn't I? Kenta, Hikari finally speaks up again, having got over her mini sulk. Fair point, I guess. But what I'm getting out of this is So what you're saying is you could magic yourselves clean? Her eyes narrow. She takes in the brief breath, her cheeks puffing out dangerously. Why do I suddenly fear for my ears? She sighs instead, the air escaping her in one long drawn out of breath of defeat. Uh, my eardrums are safe for another day. Phew! I catch a glance at the clock on the wall. All this drama has really eaten into my free time before school. If I don't stop breakfast now, there will be no way I'll make it in time. You guys do whatever then. I'm going to make some food. I start for the kitchen, but Saka cuts me off, sliding from me. Her eyes are almost sparkling as she leans forward. 
私たちが代わりに作ってあげるいろいろ使わせてもらったお詫びにねっ光えー That sounds dangerous She pulls Hikari in by the arm She tightens her grip on Hikari's arm, a deadly edge behind her, the one cheerful words. Huh? Letting them cook? I'm not so sure. What's the worst that could happen? Absolutely not! Well, if you think about it, two cute girls might cook for you. What do you say? And they actually want to. Uh, on the other hand, we've seen what happened yesterday. Well, I mean, over there, the night before, right? Mm. Okay, dude, just go take a shower because I'm pretty sure you didn't take one again. Uh, which is kind of annoying. I mean,. Okay, so basically, the day before he went to school, he didn't take shower. He returned and he immediately went to bed. That's one day without. Uh, now that's another day. Well, maybe he actually did take shower this day. We kind of don't know that. I mean, there was his car in the bathroom, then he went out and then everyone is down in the kitchen. Alright, whatever. Why am I thinking about that now? What's the worst that could happen? I don't see the harm in it, I suppose. Seems to mean well, and it would be nice to get easy after all of the stress. Sure. Go for it. Psycho beams make me feel confident in my choice. Eh. Uh, I, I think. Huh. Wait, that. With that, she spins on her heel and waltzes in the kitchen, dragging along with her a very reluctant Hikari. I take a seat in the connect dining room and ease myself in the chair. This will be fine. Right? Right? It starts off well enough, uh, anyway. I guess. I guess. I hear plates and oven seals scratter about with cupboard doors battering along. Oh my god! I knew it. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. The frantic chopping of vegetables sounds out from behind me, mixed with Hikari's panic yelps. ちゃんと見ながら切りなさい。私の首を切るつもりなの？平気平気。そ、それ入れても大丈夫なものなの？もちろん。私を信用してよ。なんか緑になってない？うん。I hear the unsettling push of flames. Just how high are they putting in on that? Things go silent in the kitchen. I can't tell if that's good or bad. I'm too scared to look, to be honest. Something explodes in the kitchen. Thick plumes of acrid smoke waft in the dining space. Huh? Boom! The roar of flames. I can see the flickering of amber in my peripheral vision. Huh? 
これはどう ？Oh my god！ た、多分これなら大丈夫。もう魔法はなしだからね。What？ でもこれなら魔法はなし。他にどうしたらいいかわからないわよ。I hear water splash. A good deal of it, like an entire bucket's worth of the stuff. Apparently done、uh, cooking. The pair enter the dining room. <laughs> Saka has a plate in kind of good amount of steam or maybe smoke drifting from it. She puts a plate before me, a sincere smile on her face.、Uh, I guess she really, really gave it her all, but. This can't be called food.、Uh, it's、uh, charred, burned, crisp remains of what might have been food at some point. Sit on the plate. It feels like it might be hazardous to even breathe in this stuff. I can see Kari lurking further back, clearly ashamed of whatever substance they have had created. I guess this is my fault for leaving them anywhere near the kitchen. I should take responsibility and. <sighs> I will so regret this, but in situations like this, well, you don't want to make the girl sad. I have no choice, do I? I don't want to make her feel bad after she worked so hard to create whatever this is. Here I go then. I give the substance a poke. It comes with a fine powder and the slightest touch. Okay, I'm sure even though it looks absolutely terrifying, it can't be that bad. Maybe there's something good under all these layers of burned stuff. I scoop up as much as I can that doesn't crumble away from my hold and force it into my mouth. Despite all my instincts, screaming at me not to. It's, it's. It's amazingly bad, right? Sakalin is in expectancy as I swallow it down. Or you could say something like, you know, I've never eaten something like that in my life. Yeah, I think this must be what charcoal tastes like. I fight back there to talk and give her a smile and a nod. No, 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 no. Oh God! What have I done? And I still have an entire plate of this stuff left. These girls are clearly the real danger to my health and well-being right now. Breakfast soon comes to close. With perhaps a more lively start to the morning than I'm generally used to. As much of a headache as they can be, it was actually sort of nice to not be completely alone in the morning. I wasn't about to tell them that for. Or I'd only encourage their almost crime criminal behavior in just waltzing to my house like that. I head out for school. My two bodyguards naturally at my side. I'm almost sort of getting used to this. I don't know if that's good or a bad thing. Huh. The journey to school goes by peacefully, not a monster in sight. For I can't help but check the feeling that something is watching me. Uh, maybe I'm just getting a little paranoid after you know, two attempts on my life have been made already. I'm sure it's all in my head. Yeah, it's all in my head. I arrive at school with time to spare. Huh, that's a first. Second, he can't keep close to my side. So very close. I practically kill the stars of my classmates. Their looks ranging from bitter, sinful to jealous. I can't imagine what they must think of this whole situation. Hey, look, hey, girls. 
Do you really have to stay so close to me? I appreciate what you're doing, Kendo, but I think I'll be fine in school. As long as you're at least close by, I should be fine, right? And I think it'd be hard for most to get this close to me in class without at least getting caused some sort of commotion beforehand. Hikari, Hikari falls silent. She darrows her eyes into glare and folds her arms together, tossing her head to the side. She storms over to her desk and drops into the chair, her eyes straight forward, leaving me and Saka together. Uh, they upset her. I don't think Shirlan is how scared it sounded. Captured with her usual green. So it's dangerous. You don't need to. I have no complaints. Thank you. I let out the sigh. Fairfine is starting to listen to reason, if only a little. The bell sounds, signifying the start of class. I pass by a disgruntled hikari in the way to my own desk. She doesn't even look my way. Harsh. The morning classes pass by in the blink of the night, the lunch break soon arriving. I stand up and let our Aya on to find I'm not alone. Come on, girls. I don't know it. I, I, I don't know. Is it not weird? I mean, there are two girls and you say guys. No, I just... No. Doesn't work for me. Come on, girls. We talked about this. As if the conversation this morning had never happened, I find both my guardians standing around me, oblivious to my irritation. I'm going to get my own lunch, kind of. You guys don't need to be glued to my side. Yes, they need to. Yes, they need to. Go do your own things or whatever. Ouch. Ouch. That's harsh as well. I don't know. I don't know, something. Anything. Right? Uh, I feel like you two have been pretty much attached to me since I first met you yesterday. Uh, and what's, what's, what's so bad about that? Some briefing room would be nice. I really am grateful that they are here. Otherwise, I might have met a grizzly and, and yesterday. Well, maybe that would be good. Or maybe not. But this is borderline stalking. We would need to end the story then. And that wouldn't be good if he was ended. I'm not even going to bring up how they captured outside. Eh, captured. Oh my god. How they camped outside and then proceeded to break into my house. She's never been to school? Just where do these two come from? The more I talk to her, the more she makes herself sound like an alien. Like, like. And like that, she marks off humming a happy tune. He hardly follows in her wake, but not before giving me one last ice look. I can almost feel my shoulders begin to frost. <laughs> well, 
I did it! I somehow convinced them to give me some place, peace and place. For the time being anyway. But now what? First and foremost, I should probably try not to forget about lunch again. Those rest may just keel over and have finished the job for whatever dark horse that are lurking out there. I had to get up at it. I had to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is as you would expect during lunch time, completely packed. Throngs of students take up what little walking space might have existed between the tables equally as populated. I stand my ground and gradually work my way past the crushing waves of students that impede my path. Of course, getting food would never be so simple. I eventually work my way to the front of the line and approach the counter. Naturally, after all the students before me, there was very little in the way of choice. I guess it's either a sandwich or this other sandwich. Neither of which seem amazingly appetizing. Ah, eh, whatever. Anything will do after how much food I've missed out on. Chief, bland, sandwich in hand, I give a look over the tables. Like before, they are all pretty packed. For I do see one fairly empty table at the far end, with a more someone happily digging away at their lunch. Even from this distance, I can tell it's like a her brown brown hair instantly distinguishable from everyone else's. I don't see Gary anywhere inside. They must have decided to do their own things for the break. I guess if I want to sit down here to eat, Saka's table is the only choice, but do I really want to eat here? It's so noisy, I can hardly even think. She has announced me there, completely absorbed in the demolition of her food. Maybe I can slip away to the roof, where no doubt it will be more peaceful. Hmm. <laughs> well. I do like, kind of like Sayaka, so let's let let's let's stay with him, live with her. Then again, I can't really be bothered to scale all the way up to the roof when there is a seat right before me with a cute girl, and it might be a wasted journey if, for whatever reason, people are up there. The table it is. Uh, uh oh. Okay, that's some weird look you are giving to that food. And why do we have so much food? And give me some. I approach Saka, whose eyes light up at the side of me. <coughs> her cheeks full of bursting, she attempts to address me, frantically waving her hand in the air as food flies everywhere. Yes, don't talk with your food, mouthful. Hey. Is it okay if I sit here? Oh no, oh no. She nods enthusiastically, shoveling another mouthful of food in. I'm no expert in the mouthful language, but I think she said, be my guest. I didn't notice before, but she has tons of food in her tray. Enough for 10 students at least. I'm not really sure how she got away with so many portions. It's the water, the pickings were slim by the time I got there. I'm wondering if magic was used in persuading and so we give her all of this. It's scary thing just how easily she's been wrapping the school around her fingers, it's sheer right. I mean, right now she's only used it to enroll herself and get extra portions. But where does it end? There's almost something sinister to it all. Drink her at the table, I unwrap my sandwich and take a bite. Yep. Just as bland as I thought it would be. Just the way I like it. Apparently done with whatever food it was, she had crumbs into her mouth like some kind of must uh, hamster. She's finally free to talk. So I can see her begin to MS and her shovels worth. She's like machine. Uh, yeah. I did, but there's nowhere else to really sit, so... Okay, okay. I admit. She grins and takes another bite. Huh? Funny. That's a point, where is Hikari? I thought she'd be with you. Uh, it's okay, finish your mouthful first. It's not detergent. 
I bring up my arm to shelter myself from flecks of stray food as she excitedly tries to explain things. Ross. But cute. Damn it. She's more like me. I would do the same. Actually. But we are following Sayaka now. Do you think she's okay? She was down another bite. Less than half of the food left from what I first saw before I sat down. Where is it all going in that slim finger of hers? Well, I do know where it goes. Yet you probably know also. Good to know, I think. So basically, if we feel the entire school rumble, we can assume something has happened to Hikari. Uh, so, how are you finding your time at school? I think you mentioned something about having never been to the one before. As if to emphasize that point, she stops talking to her food. Her face practically glowing. Oh, tell me more. What did you guys do? Some sort of magic school or something? I wasn't really being serious, and I didn't expect her to answer so honestly either. Really? Her mouth full again. She nods, having learned at least some others. That's a really, really, by the looks of things. Yeah, a magic school. Where they teach magic? That sounds like it could have been fun. Psycho's expression darkens. Did I say the wrong thing again? She clamps her mouth shut and slumps a head across as if to stop any more words from leaking out. Damn it! She realized! <laughs> well, I know these days I'm going to find out just what the heck these two are! Any day now, and she'll sleep up completely and spill everything. Okay then, if I'm not allowed to know about this fancy magic organization you're part of, can I at least know a little bit more about you? I mean, you seem to know everything there is to know about me, for whatever creepy reason, so it'd be nice if I knew a bit more about the people like me, magic aside. Hmm. Man truly has to think about this. Is it really that difficult for her to think of something that is magic related that she can actually share with me? Poor girl. She whips her gaze over the cafeteria, a smile, a small smile growing on her face. Well, I'm not really sure if I'd classify what they did as a role, but I get what she means. She falls silent, her eyes distant. She's lost in another world right now, deep in her thoughts. I never figured her as the kind to do all this deep thinking. Like a normal girl, huh? 
does that mean she doesn't like her magic way of life? I can see how it might get tiring if you have to battle beings constantly like that monster I saw the other day. But she chose that lifestyle, right? At least I think she must have. I can't really ask her, I, I don't think I'll get away with more magic related questions for today. Well, you can stay with me if you want. Yeah? Eyes glimmering and glistening lips parted very so slightly. She gives me a look that makes my heart drop. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling she's about to ask me something really important here? Her eyes fall to the sandwich my hand, still with only one bite in it. Uh, no, I'm fine. Here. Still in the day, strong. The look she gave me a moment ago, she snatched the sandwich out of my hand without resistance. Wait, what? What just happened? I'm left staring blankly at the, my empty hand. The majority of my sandwich already lost to the black hole that is Saka's stomach. I may have made a mistake here. And this her tray is completely empty too. Spotless even. She's a monster. The lunch break soon comes to an end and we are whisked back to class. There's the school day goes by fairly normally. No crazy attacks. No monsters. I still can't shake the feeling something's watching me for. Same. <laughs> Not really. Let's end the episode and we will go home in the next one. For now, hope you enjoyed it and... Well... Obviously, see you in the next one. I hope so. Alright, bye bye.